So, um, my pregnancy, there's a lot that happened in that. That's why I was filming Pregnancy Story Part 1 and 2, and I'm yet to get Part 2 up. But with my labor and delivery, I was not <laughs> expecting to deliver the day that I delivered. I delivered on September 1st, which is my daughter's birthday. She's down here, by the way. And um, I wasn't expecting to deliver. Now, rewind. It'll probably be in Part 2 of my pregnancy story, but I wanted to deliver. She was due September 5th, and I wanted to deliver anywhere between... I wanted to deliver that Saturday specifically. That's the day that I wanted. My husband wanted to have her that Thursday. You know how you just pick certain days where you're like, this is the day I want her to come. He wanted her to come on a Thursday. I can't remember why. I can't remember why he wanted her to come on a Thursday. Ah, that's, that's funny. I can't remember why, but he wanted her to come on a Thursday. I wanted her to come on a um, Saturday. I wanted her to come on a Saturday. So... My sister would be off. My sister works um, with kids, and then um, it would just be easy for everybody because it's Saturday is the weekend, and it was Labor Day weekend, so you had like extended days. So anybody that worked would have an extended vacation. But the way it happened, it was perfect anyway. And I went into my doctor's um, that day because I had an appointment. I actually had an appointment. London's moving the camera. I had actually had an appointment. Um, that Monday and when I went in that Monday she said she wanted me to see come in that Friday because I was already dilated I can't remember how many I think I was dilated for weeks before that I had been dilated out of one I think it was out of three when I went in on that Monday and she was like just feeling she's like let's go ahead and get this baby delivered now rewind I don't want to say too much that would be in my pregnancy story part two because that's repetitive but she was like watching my pregnancy closely because I had gestational diabetes in my pregnancy or so they say and she was like just wanted to make sure of that the thing they really um, look for in that if you have gestational diabetes is the weight of the baby or whatever but London was only seven pounds five ounces so I don't know and um, another thing that we they said while I was pregnant that my body was carb sensitive, which is weird. I don't know. I don't know. That'll be in pregnancy story part two. And they were talking about, so I mostly ate protein in my pregnancy. Anyways, fast forward. So she wanted me to come in again on that Friday. I was dilated, like I said, but I wasn't in labor or anything. And yeah, that was that. Well, I started having a pain and the right side of my leg, no, no, sorry, left side of my leg, it was so bad that I could like barely even get out of the bed and barely couldn't walk and it was, I knew what it was, it was sciatica. It was a, the sciatic nerve that causes pain. So I had that and it, I mean, I was just in so much pain. It was just painful. And then when that went away, it was so weird because I had it really bad. Like I had it, but I could still walk, but it was just painful, but then the two days where it was the worst and I literally did not even want to like couldn't move without it being so painful um the days after that it like randomly stopped or the pain stopped so I guess London had been pressing down on a nerve which was causing it and then she changed positions and that's when I'm pretty sure I was started London you're moving the camera honey I'm pretty sure that's when I was in labor, um, but I wasn't having contractions. But I, okay, so I'm gonna have to explain that. I was having contraction, but contractions, but I wasn't feeling them. What I was feeling was anytime I would go to use the restroom, I felt like there was, I don't know, like pressure. That's what it was, heavy, intense pressure. And I was like, okay, um, so I'm feeling this pressure. I mean, a lot of pressure, almost like if you need to go to the restroom kind of pressure down there. And I'm like, but I'd already had my doctor's appointment on that Monday. And they said like, she had been down, um, head down for a few weeks since at that point, I think she had been down, head down since like 36 weeks. And I was 39 weeks, I forgot to mention that. Um, so she'd been down there a good amount of time like in position birthing position and so um 
yeah I didn't know like you know I was only dilated though out of one so I guess that's why I was like I don't know what's happening here well that Friday um, she wanted to see me again before Labor Day weekend and um, I had a doctor's appointment and they gave me an ultrasound and they said that the pockets of like the fluid um, the amniotic fluid or whatever that it was low that the fluid was low and that most of it was like behind her body like the little that was left was like behind her whatever that means in doctor terminology and so they just wanted to go ahead and get me in to um, be induced they also said that I had to go through a little test like I said because of gestational diabetes um, periodically and because of my pregnancy history um, they had me have ultrasounds more often than you normally would have and then I also um, had like the little I don't know how to describe it but it was a test that I had to do where they would test for certain things London's breathing blah 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 she passed every time my baby is a diva and she's stubborn so sometimes it would take longer than others but she passed every time so they did that same test but they were like yeah she's not doing any of the things that they usually check for not that it was anything bad it was just that they were feeling like she's ready to be born even though my body wasn't technically i wasn't in labor but i kind of was um so my doctor was like let's you go straight to the hospital and i'm going to induce you mind you i did not want to be induced i was 39 weeks I felt like she would have came on her own anyway just because she had already been down in birthing position for so long, head down. Um, I was having that intense pressure. She had been on that nerve causing sciatica and I was like, and then she moved. So she changed positions and I didn't have it anymore and I was able to walk and I was normal again. So because she moved, I felt like she had shifted down further, which they did confirm when they checked me and she had, you so cute. <laughs> You baby. Oh my goodness. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Um, but they had confirmed when they checked me that, you know, she was down and blah blah blah, but I, again, I was only one centimeter. If you don't know, you need to be ten centimeters and that's when the baby's ready to be born. Or be dilated to a ten. That's what that is. Here. Um, so you need to be dilated to a 10 and I was at, I had been at a one or almost a two for the longest. And I think I was a three. I was a three. The day that I went in the, to have induced, I was a three. So they checked me. I was a three. Um, so I went in and she was like, you know, just go straight to the hospital. My husband even couldn't even go with me. He had to go, um, to get our stuff we weren't ready we weren't prepared i wasn't prepared to give birth and my mom was staying at her house because she was going to be there and so nobody was prepared for this we just thought it was a regular doctor's appointment um i wasn't prepared to be induced i didn't want to be induced i was 39 weeks i wanted to go full term 40 but i was um i was 39 weeks in like a few days so i was almost 40 so i was just like why not just let her come on her own i just had heard so many horror stories about being induced and my mom had been induced with my younger sister and it's just usually when you're induced not always um it can just take longer or it can be harder labor and i just didn't want to go through any of that but we can say but god on that one. um so i went straight to the delivery room to like you know not the delivery room but the hospital check in and all that and my husband went to get my mom and our stuff they checked me when I first got to the hospital and I like I said I had already felt like I was in labor and when she checked me she said I was like a three and a half this is before any induction medication so I'm dilating <laughs> and clearly in labor before I was even induced but I still, um, they still wanted to induce me and to hurry up and get her out. I'm guessing because of the low fluid. Like I said, I'm not a doctor. I'm just going off the of memory and stuff that they told. So I was in there, um, they checked me and I was already dilating and she was like, oh yeah, you're dilated this far. Let me check to see if you're having contractions because you know, you're dilating. And she's like, I was having a little bit of contractions, but not really. And I was like, okay, well that's why I haven't been feeling anything or whatever. Mind you, I'd already prayed, and I am just that type of person. I believe 100% that, you know, 
prayer works and if your faith is at a certain level that he'll meet you at that certain level and I have been praying the whole time during my pregnancy that when I went into labor I wanted a quick labor quick easy pain-free labor and delivery I wanted an easy quick pain-free labor and delivery and I really you know believe that God can do anything if you ask him and you believe and you have faith so I wasn't having contractions and then they put me on the induction medication, which causes your body to speed up labor um, and forces your body to have contractions and it just speeds up the whole labor process. Um, and so they did that and what I started feeling, oh, by the way, I should tell you, my husband did make it back <laughs> to the hospital, and him and then my mom and um, one of my sisters and my nephew had come. They were at our house. But he had brought her stuff and my mom and all of them came. And I was in labor and then she had checked again um, and I was having contractions. But this whole time, I knew I had been in labor even before I went to my doctor's appointment. I wasn't feeling contractions. And she was like, are you feeling those? You're having like, you know, pretty big contractions. And I was like, no, I wasn't feeling anything. Um, Usually you'll have contractions in your stomach or your back because back labor is the worst. I had back labor with my daughter that we lost at 19 weeks. It is the worst thing of life. And I have felt contractions before, so I knew what to feel. I had them with her and I had back labor and it was just the worst thing ever. Oh my gosh, no. Um, but yeah, so I had labor before, contractions before. And I wasn't having any and it was shown on sheets that I was contracting. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is God, like 100%. Again, like I said, when you get induced, labor is usually harder and just longer, and it can be. Not always. Anyways, what I did keep feeling was pressure, like that pressure I told you about earlier. And it literally felt like there was a bowling ball down there, like, and clearly it's a baby, but I just don't know how else to describe it, but feeling like a heaviness that you needed to release like you have to use the bathroom, but it just kept getting worse and worse, and that was what I was feeling. So I wasn't feeling you know my contractions but I was feeling that pressure oh that pressure and honestly that pressure was awful it wasn't bad as contractions but it was it didn't feel good